take a seat. We have lots of seats down here in front. Thank you for coming to Convocation. We have a great presentation for you today. First, just a couple of announcements. There are a lot of things going on at the college. So those of you who are looking for Christmassy cultural events to attend, tonight through Saturday is a Christmas carol at 7.30 and also a Christmas spectacular featuring the Snow College choirs, wind symphony, and the jazz bands is happening Saturday night right here at 7.30 as well. There are also numerous other events happening and they're listed on Canvas for those of you who are taking the class. Those also in the class, don't forget to take your final survey. Um, it's open today after class and it will be open for an entire week. So don't forget to take that. Please remember to take out your phones and silence them since this is a live recording. Also next week will be our final convocation of the semester and it will be the Snow College Theater and Dance Department. So that should be a lot of fun, so bring your friends to that. Today we are very honored to welcome Bea Voce. She is a relationship specialist and as a cast member on MTV's The Real World, Bea learned firsthand the power of connection. Since then, she's made it her life's work to harness the power of connection. Bea has spent the last decade studying relationships and connection through psychology, emotional intelligence, and body language. She's a certified neuro-linguistic programming practitioner, host of The Art of Connection, a weekly series partnered with ABC, and she speaks and leads workshops nationwide. Her presentation today is entitled Body Language 101, how to use body language to connect with people. Please join me in welcoming Bea Voce. Okay, awesome. Um, so I wanted to talk about body language today because I figured Body language is a subject that is relatable for all age groups, no matter how old or young. And it's so important, and I'm gonna talk about why here, obviously, in the next little while. But um, body language is interesting because, sorry, I'm just trying to fiddle with this to get it away so I don't have to think about it. Okay, speaking of body language. <laughs> Um, so body language is interesting because it can be used in all areas of our lives. So whether it's personal, think like dating, or professional interviewing. We are using our bodies to connect and communicate with people whether we like it or not. So it's actually said that only 7% of communication happens verbally. That means 93% of what we're saying actually isn't even coming out of our mouths. It's happening with our facial expressions, the tone of our voice, and of course, our bodies, which is what we're going to talk. We're gonna talk about a little bit of everything today. So how this is gonna go is I'm basically gonna dump a whole bunch of information on you. And I'm gonna leave some time for questions because some of you are gonna resonate with some of the things I'm talking about and not others. And so we're just gonna go through like a span of Body Language 101 that can be really useful all across the board. Is this on? Okay. okay, so I wanna start with why body language is so important. Um, so this is a really interesting. So there was a, a debate with Nixon and Kennedy when they were both running for president. And it was at a time when not everybody had TVs in their houses. So about half the country listened to the debate via their radios at home. And half the country watched TV and watched the debate. <clears throat> the interesting part about it is that the people who watched the debate thought Kennedy won. And it was split basically 50-50 down the middle. The people who listened to the debate, the debate, thought that Nixon won. So I wanna show you just like the first 20 seconds of this debate so you can really get, a, get kind of an idea of 
why this is so important. And, and you'll, you'll know right off of the bat, just think of like how you're feeling in your body when you're looking at the body language. You'll see, you'll, you'll get a sense um, right, right out of the gate, literally in the first 20 seconds. Okay, let's see if we have it. Good evening. The television and radio stations of the United States and their affiliated stations are proud to provide facilities for a discussion of issues in the current political campaign by the two major candidates for the presidency. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. According to rules set by okay. the candidates themselves... Okay, so let's see, it's mine gonna work or are you? Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I want to just point out some of the gestures that Nixon did. Now, so Kennedy, you basically see he's sitting stoic the whole time. He's looking right at the audience. He doesn't really move. Nixon, on the other hand, is showing a lot of nonverbal cues that are showing um, uh, things that are not qualified for leaders, which obviously this is a pre presidential debate. That's exactly what we want, and are really submissive. So a couple of things. Nixon is looking at Kennedy. I'll mimic his move. So Nixon is looking at Kennedy. Now, Kennedy is looking right at us, which shows confidence and also shows that he is the leader. This is actually a not confident, right here, when we're looking here, and a scared position to be in. So here instead of what he's doing. Also, you'll see he's gripping the side of his chair, which is a nervous move. And also, it looks like he has a fist, and that's a sign of aggression. And then the other thing, you can see his feet. He's in a runner's stance. And when you're in a runner's stance, I mean, just think about that stance in general. You're prepping to leave. That's a, a leaving position. And because one foot is behind him, it's scared. He's hiding, which feels not trustworthy. So I just thought that was a really interesting one, especially because not everybody saw and the difference between seeing and hearing and what a huge, huge role body language plays. So I'm gonna show you another video. You can just... This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? No! <laughs> okay, you can stop the video. <laughs> um, this is a, it's a commercial for cyclists, but um, can you help me with the, awesome, thank you. So it just goes to show our brain can miss super obvious clues and cues if we don't know what to look for or if we're not open to seeing them. So the reason why we're talking about body language today is because the more we know about body language since we all use it, the more control we can have in situations over the outcome whether it be building rapport with somebody, how somebody feels about us, whether it be we're in an interview and we want somebody to like us. There are so many reasons why body language is so important. Also, I mean, think about it. When you're interacting with somebody and they're using, and you can pick up on cues that you normally wouldn't, wouldn't clue into, you can pick up lies easier, you can, know how to, you can know how to drive the conversation, whether you need to switch gears, et cetera. So it's all really important. We edit our environment both consciously and subconsciously. So while we think we're always using our rational brains and we're always in complete control of thinking of everything that's going on around us, we're not. And, and body language especially has way more to do with the subconscious than it does the conscious. So think about when you're at a restaurant with a friend 
And if you're not really paying attention, you can probably clue into all of the noise going on around you. You can maybe even hear a conversation that's happening beside you. But when you're really tuned into a conversation, all of a sudden you hear very clearly what that person says and the rest becomes white noise. It just goes to show how if we put a little more consciousness into our conversations, how, how big of a deal that is. So we make our first, our first impressions um, within the first 30 seconds of meeting somebody. That's a huge deal. So think, think about how we're using our bodies in the first 30 seconds. That's like we have, we have so much that we can do that's at our disposal that we're going to learn about today. Um, body language influences how people feel about you and how you <clears throat> feel about yourself. So this is one of the most interesting parts of body language. So researchers who were working with body language for the <clears throat> excuse me for the past decade or so, we've been they've been thinking that that body language only has an impact on the person you're talking with. So, so when I'm engaging with you, then you're the one who, who changes your opinion about me, me based off of my body language cues to you. Not so simple. In fact, it's been proven that body language not only affects the person that we're talking to, but it also changes our physical chemistry. Has anybody seen the Amy Cuddy TED Talk on body language? Okay, so this is Amy Cuddy's work. Um, also, researchers have found that body language, for the most part, is innate and not learned. So a lot of what we're doing with our bodies, it's subconscious. We're making these moves without even thinking about them. They're innate. And, and there are some, for, for the sake of today, we're just going to be talking about the ones that are innate. There are some body language things that we pick up um, and mean different things in different cultures, like thumbs up in some cultures means good, some th thumbs up in some cultures actually is pretty crude. So we're not talking about things that aren't universally true today. Everything we're talking about is an innate way we use our bodies. So going into body positioning. So high and low power body positioning. So this is pretty interesting. Um, this stance is the universally recognized winning stance. So researchers studied congenital, congenitally blind athletes, which just means they've been blind since birth. So they had never, ever seen anybody use body language, of course, right? And they, they looked at their body language after they won some sort of sport. What they found was that the same people, the sa excuse me, the same people who use um, this not blind, who obviously know that this is what people do, Blind people do the exact same thing. This is innate. We, we um, automatically go into high power body positioning when we have increases in testosterone, which is a confidence boosting hormone, and we go into low body, body positioning, which, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. You're tightening up. You're closing off a lot of times when we're on our phones. Think about it. You're like walking down the street and you're like this. When we're going to an interview, you're sitting down, maybe you're reading a magazine or you're on your phone. Low power body positioning has also been proven to up your cortisol levels, which is a stress inducing hormone. So there was this Harvard University study that was done where they took the saliva from a group of participants and they, they had half of the group go into high power body positioning. Now it could be this, it could be this, just high power anything big. They had half of the group go into low power body positioning and they, they were each in the higher low power body positioning for about five or so minutes. Then they had each group go and gamble. Then they got done gambling and they took samples of their saliva again. What they found was that the people who had high power body positioning took more risks, their testosterone increased, and their cortisol level decreased. So remember, testosterone, confidence, cortisol, stress. And with the people who went into low power body positioning, the exact opposite happened. They took less risk, their cortisol levels increased, and their testosterone levels decreased. So I want to talk a little bit about microexpressions. When we're talking about high and low power body positioning, it's pretty simple to know whether or not you're closed off 
or you're big. And that's just, you know, body language 101, the very first thing you want to think about. Am I open? Am I closed? And what does that mean to the person who I'm talking with? Microexpressions are a little bit different. So microexpressions are very short, involuntary expressions displayed when someone experiences an emotion. So Dr. Paul Ekman, he is a psychologist. He found, he has been studying and is the leader when it comes to studying the face. And he found that there are basically seven universal, universal microexpressions that we all make all across the world. Now, when I just said involuntary, we don't even know we're doing this and they happen in a split second. Um, they're really hard to fake, especially because they come on and they leave so quickly. And when you do these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into some examples. When you do these, you can literally start feeling the emotion of what you're doing with your face, which is a great clue into what somebody else is feeling when you want to know where the conversation is and how to gauge the conversation, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But OK, so the first is disgust. So when I do this, do this also along with me so you can start to feel it. So your nose is wrinkling and your upper lip is raised. I mean, so think about it, something smells weird, <laughs> right? Like you just go into this strange face. Contempt, this is an interesting one because contempt is just one, one side of your lip raised. But it can be mistaken for maybe somebody agreeing with you like, yeah, that's a really good idea. Right? But if we're not picking up on these very subtle cues, it's really easy to mistake for somebody subconsciously telling us something else. Sadness, your upper eyelids drop, your lips lower. Fear, your eyebrows are raised and pulled together. So fear, and we'll talk about surprise in just a minute, but fear, your eyebrows are generally straight across. Surprise, your eyebrows are generally raised, but fear, straight across eyebrows, Raised upper eyelids, you can generally see like the whites of your eyeballs. Um, tense lower eyelids and lips slightly stretched back, so I'm afraid. Okay, so you see my eyebrows go here. Now, I'm actually going to go to surprise and then we'll go to anger. With surprise, your eyebrows go in more of a U shape form. And why this is important is because, I don't know, say you are trying to catch somebody in a lie. You think they're lying to you or whatever, and you're like, babe, you said you weren't ever gonna text your ex back, and your ex or your partner is like, I would never do that. Surprise probably clues you into they're, they're doing something, they, they're telling the truth. Fear, on the other hand, I would never do that. They're probably getting caught in a lie. So surprise and fear are really interesting when it comes to lie detecting in a really great way. Just remember the you, surprise, straight, ac straight across fear. Um, anger is your eyebrows down and drawn together and your narrowing of the lips. And then the other one that's not shown, it, that the universal uh, microexpression is happiness. A way you can tell somebody's faking being happy is generally they don't have the crow's feet right here. So I'm happy, I'm happy. So you can see the difference between um, those being real or not real. Again, I know I'm dropping a lot on you, so just take what you take. Um, we'll, we'll do questions um, as I wrap up. So building rapport, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay, so rapport is built by the feeling of commonality. So we have rapport with our families, we have rapport with our friends. Think of quickly just somebody who you really like. And now think of somebody who you really don't like. Generally, we like people who are like us or who we want to be like, and we don't like people who are not like us. Building rapport is showing somebody subconsciously that we are like each other. Okay. Um, so actually, before we play this video, let me talk about this for just a second. Okay, so one of the ways we build rapport is through our voice. So we can do that through the speed we're talking, the volume, and the terminology we're using. So if somebody is, if you're talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, bro, I just like, I don't know, like rode these like killer waves or like just, you know, I was on the mountain and I like, got the fresh pal. And you're like, 
wow, I love the fresh powder. I really do. It's great. Like there is zero rapport there. But if you're, if somebody's like, hey, I rolled that fresh pow, and all of a sudden you're like, me too, bro. See, all of a sudden we're speaking the same language, terminology. It matters. Um, speed is another one. So if somebody is speaking slowly to you, you want to match the way that they're speaking. You want to match the speed that they're using and the volume of their voice. So if somebody is quiet and they're talking to you and you want to build rapport and you're, and you're loud, notice that if somebody is quiet and just quiet yourself down. Here is an example of that. can never be sure and vet bills can be really expensive. On average it costs £550 for a trip to the vets which is why it's a good idea to take out pet insurance and with direct you line just, you get 12... Years, you'll be in the whole world. You, I won't you could get 12 one. months no, pet won't. insurance for the price you of because nine. Because I you were. You were, were, were. It's what you are. You could get you 12 months pet insurance for the price of nine. Really? Yes. <coughs> yes. It really is quite straightforward. Get 12 months for the price of nine on both our essential and advanced pet. Yeah, you can move. Okay, perfect. So there are a few different ways to build rapport. And I want you to be thinking about this in your own lives, whether you're making new friends, whether you're going on a first date, whether you're interviewing, whether you're trying to get a raise, building rapport is one of the most important things in general, we can, we can learn if we want to build a higher emotional intelligence and, and have people like us. So there's something called mirroring and matching. It's exactly like it sounds. If somebody is doing, so say you're sitting across the table from somebody and they're doing this, you do the same thing. Now, don't make it super obvious so that when somebody is doing that, you just like awkwardly go into that position. But um, same thing, right? So if somebody is, if you're sitting across the table from somebody and somebody picks up their drink and takes a drink, you do the same thing. You mimic, you mirror what they're doing and subconsciously this cues them into, oh, we're alike. And remember, we like people who we are alike. Um, so that's a really powerful and easy thing to do. And then a really interesting way to figure out if you have built rapport is pacing and leading. So when you're trying to build rapport with somebody, you'll generally be the person who is copying and mimicking and mirroring them. A way to tell if you have built rapport with somebody is to start doing something and see if they mimic you back. Whatever that is, if you want to close your arms, if you want to do whatever it is, and chances are, if you have built rapport, someone will mimic you subconsciously. So, and, and now, that, now that I've just told you this, you'll probably start noticing, like when somebody starts leaning back in a, in, in a chair to get comfortable, you'll notice you automatically just kind of want to do that also. So start seeing where this shows up. So facial expressions, this goes back to micro expressions. If you want to try and clue yourself into how somebody else is feeling, clue yourself into maybe a lie, um, gauging where the conversation is, mimic their facial expressions. So if somebody you see is, feel, if you're trying to figure out what they are, what they're feeling, then do the same thing they are and you'll start to feel that feeling. So you're like, oh, that's disgust. Okay, I, I get that. So that's another way to build rapport. Breathing, so this is, this is similar to matching the volume of somebody, but listen and watch for somebody's breath. If they're taking deep breaths or shallow breaths, do the same thing. Body positioning, so this is interesting. When we, the way that we use our bodies in conversations, it, it is such a big indicator of where somebody is at in that conversation. So what we do, for instance, if I'm at a networking event or whatever it is, I generally, we point our feet in the direction we want to go. So if the exit is over here and we're having a conversation, if I want to leave, subconsciously, my feet are pointing over here and we're having this conversation and all of a sudden I have closed myself off to you. This is a really, really important thing to gauge because if somebody is doing that to you, it's a really great way to be like, all right, deuces, like I'm done with this conversation and make an exit. 
Um, it's also really good because you have, may have been in the position before where somebody is taking so long to finish up the conversation and you're like, I gotta go, like, I don't wanna talk to you anymore. You'll notice yourself being like, yeah, because you're subconsciously trying to get them to be quiet. So really notice that. Um, this crossing arms, you know, it's universally a sign of being closed down. It's also a really comfortable position. So, you know, I, I hesitate, I don't, I would say don't do this, but if somebody is doing this, it's not necessarily because they don't wanna be engaged, it can just be comfortable. Watch yourself though, because it does give a subconscious clue that people are closed off. Handshakes are really interesting because we're shaking people's hands all the time. And we've had handshakes that are like the limp noodle, and then we've had handshakes that are like the death grip. Um, and we don't wanna be either of those, but mimicking somebody's handshake is also a really good way to build rapport. So matching, somebody, the, matching somebody's intensity. Also, what something else to note is the higher you get up the arm, the more intimate it is. So Bill Clinton is known for being a people person. People love Bill Clinton. What he does for a handshake is he shakes your hand and he'll put his hand on your shoulder. So can I just get you really quickly? So, okay, so if I shake, I can shake his hand like this. This is kind of an average, can you guys see? So here I am, this is an average handshake. In order to get to somebody, somebody to feel a little bit differently, maybe a little more connected to you, you can shake their hand, you can put a second hand here, you can make your way up their arm, and what Bill Clinton does is he'll come and he'll say, hi, great to meet you, and he goes right here, which is brave, because that's a really intimate space. So just kind of knowing that the further up you go, the more intimate it is, um, and it's great to know because if you've just gotten to know somebody who you feel like you have a connection with, it's not a bad idea to or who you really wanna impress or you wanna have a deeper connection with, it's not a bad idea to shake their hand, put another one on their shoulder. Oh, and yeah, no, you don't need to do, again, you do not need to do all of these. Take the ones that are most comfortable for you. Chances are there are gonna be some of these that feel really uncomfortable and unnatural. Don't do those. Do the ones that come more naturally. Also, building rapport and all of these things, it's just like working a muscle. The more you do it, the easier it gets. So if you're really awkward doing this at the beginning, don't worry. Okay, sensory acuity. Sensing of the most unnoticeable for the truest information. So sensory acuity is great if you want to lie detect, if you wanna find out if somebody is telling you the truth or not. Something to know about sensory acuity is we all have a baseline. So if you're in a conversation with somebody and you wanna figure out if they're telling you the truth or not, ask them a couple of questions that aren't very charged, like what did you do this weekend? What's your favorite thing for lunch? Right, things that people generally don't have a reason to lie about. At that point, you can get somebody's baseline. So if somebody says, if you're like, what did you do this weekend and it was like, I took a road trip, great. And then if the next time, if you ask them kind of a more serious question and they're like, I don't like your mom or whatever it is and they do the same thing or I really like your mom and you're like, uh, you know it's generally not a lie because their baseline is the same thing. Skin color, so people, people blush obviously. We know that our skin tones change so being really acutely aware of people's skin tone and how it change, changes within the conversation. If somebody is more uncomfortable, their skin tone will start to change. Um, symmetrical and non-symmetrical, so how tight or loose the skin is. When we get uncomfortable, a lot of times we'll like do really strange things with our face that we're not even really noticing. Like we'll like tighten up a little bit. Like, yeah, I really am having a great time on this first date that I can't wait to leave <laughs> and see like my, my everything is just a little bit tighter. Um, breathing fast or slow, high versus low, where is their breath? and their lower lip size, so lines versus no lines. Um, you can tell lower lip size, like when we, we can, if we wanna hide, we can do, again, some real funky things with our lips, like we can bite our lips, our lips hide. Anyhow, so sensory acuity. Now, so we're, I'm gonna open up for questions now, 
But first, right after this, I want you to do a partner exercise. So pair up, you can do this in twos or threes. So find somebody or two somebodies to do this with. Introduce yourself, build rapport, if you will. <laughs> you two, get together. Okay, okay. So, have your partners. All right. So, what I want you to do is we're going to put all the things that I talked about as far as microexpression, sensory acuity, we're going to put those into practice. Actually, can you, is there anybody up there? Can you raise the lights if so, so we can see each other just a little better? Awesome, thank you. Okay, so part, pick partner A and partner B. Pick who, part, you're going to switch, so don't worry about it. Okay, um, partner A, what we did at the beginning, think of somebody you like and think of somebody you don't like. Don't tell your other part, don't tell partner B who this is. Partner A, think of somebody you don't like and somebody you do like. Okay. Partner A, still, I'm gonna stick with partner A. Pick one of those two people, the person you like or the person you don't like. Do not tell your partner who this is. Okay? Partner B, I want you to watch. They're, you're just gonna make eye contact and look at each other. That's all you're doing. You're just making eye contact and looking, looking, looking at each other while partner A has that person in mind. <laughs> partner A, try not to give it away by doing obvious things. Partner B, I want you to try and look at their micro expressions and guess which person they're thinking about. Go. You too, why don't you get together, right here, and do this together. Yeah, yeah, yes, cool, yeah. That's okay, I mean, it's just a, it's just a exercise, yeah, just to see, um, just to see how you can pick on the nonverbals, pick up on the subtle nonverbals. Okay, switch partners if you haven't already. Partner B, find somebody, think of somebody who you like and who you don't like. Pick one of those people to think about. Make eye contact. Partner A, guess who they're thinking about. So switch people. All right, is everybody about wrapped up? Okay, wrap it up, wrap it up. All right, so I wanna hear from you. What was that like? Was it easy, was it hard? Did you notice anything? What happened? Don't all raise your hand at once. Yeah. She just said her sister got hers like straight off the bat. Awesome. Your eyes narrowed. Awesome. That was a great thing to pick up on. Okay. Anybody? Yeah. Speak up. Yeah, that's great. So what, it's, that's a perfect thing, that's such a great thing to bring up too because twitching is involuntary. It's something totally subconscious. So great, awesome. Anybody else? Okay, so that is wrapping up the presentation. I just threw a ton at you, so I wanted to 
open it up now for questions, maybe more specifics. Um, you can also ask me questions about the relationship stuff I do in general, but we can keep it to body language also. So it's kind of up to you. I just want to let you lead the discussion. And if you want to go deeper into any of these things or something that you want to learn more about that we maybe didn't talk about. Uh, yeah. You're right behind. Yeah. One more time. Yeah, yeah. Accurate. Accurate. Yeah, I mean, micro expressions are, so as you can see, like the details of the micro expression, expressions, obviously they're called micro expressions for a reason. They're so slight that micro expressions are hard to pick up on, but the more you practice, the more natural it becomes and you can totally clue into somebody being like, wait a second, that it's, you're basically looking for incongruencies. So it's just like the whole thing where somebody's like, like, um, yeah, I really liked that. I had a really good time, right? Um, you're just trying to pick up incongruencies. Yeah. Yeah, in the back, I think, with the scar, or, yes, yeah. Okay, um, let me see, let me make sure I got this question right. So if you're picking, I think the question is, if you're picking up gestures that somebody else is doing that aren't necessarily your own, you, you spend time with them, you've built rapport with them, and now you're, you've kind of got the, you, you now use those gestures. Yeah. So that is ju that's just a great sign that you've built really good rapport with somebody. So it's just like your best, you know how with your best friends or your siblings, you'll finish each other's sentences without even thinking about it or your partners? This is the same thing. So we subconsciously pick up on these, on these cues because we like one another. And, and you probably haven't ever done it uh, think you're not you're probably not thinking like oh I really like that thing you do I think I'm just gonna like take that for my own you just end up doing it and you end up doing it when you're around them and then you start doing it when you're not around them because you've picked it up and now it becomes yours so it's just a sign of building rapport that you're in you're in you are congruent with one another same thing when you're talking about language same thing as as finishing somebody's sentence just with the body yeah literally everywhere but I would say so I'm in the dating and relationship world that's where I spend most of my time um, first dates are really first dates are really tricky how many of you are single perfect this is relevant <laughs> so <laughs> okay so first dates are are really tricky because you're you're sometimes meeting the person for the first time or you're getting to know them really for the first time. And picking these cues up, knowing, knowing what you know now, all of a sudden you can walk into a date and you know right off the bat how to build rapport with somebody. Do exactly what they're doing when they're at the table. Um, if, you, if you're really interested in somebody, you can tell them by, by being more intimate, going up the arm, right? Shaking their hands, doing the thing. Um, Matching their language, knowing that if you are, knowing that if you're trying to build rapport with somebody and you want them to be interested in you, that you want to match the tone, the volume, the speed, the, the, ver their verbal cues, all of those things you want to know you're doing. So I, we use this all the time. Dating is a huge one. First dates especially. Um, that said, another really great one, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, interviewing also really a really, really great one. Networking events, another really great one. Anytime that you're in a position where you want somebody to be agreeable to you. So all the time. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, well, so he asked, he asked like the folding of arms, are there any expressions that have dual meanings? So the folding of arms doesn't have a dual meaning. It's, 
it's comfortable, but it means you're closed off. I mean, that's like subconsciously, it is registering to somebody else that you're closed off. But another really big one to watch for is shielding. Um, so, well, first of all, going back to baselining, knowing somebody's behavior when they're in uh, an environment that's really low key, there's no stress, um, is really important. But then going, so, so knowing that, but then also now going into um, shielding, what's interesting about shielding is we're, we do it all the time, especially at school. So shielding could be our phone right here. We're walking across the street, we're like this. It's putting a protective layer in between you and somebody else. We do it when we're in meetings. I'm here at my computer, you're here at this computer. We're right here, we have a shield between us. So if you can notice that you have a book right here that we're carrying like this, if you notice that you're shielding, so for instance, in negotiations or something, if you notice that somebody has something in front of them, a barrier, or on a first date, a cup in front of them, you can literally, well, you probably shouldn't move somebody else's cup because that's strange on a first date, but, um, <laughs> so don't, don't do that. But if you, wanna, if you wanna be more connected with somebody, like you're in a negotiation room or something, move, your um, move your computer or whatever is blocking, it could be a stack of papers, it can be anything, whatever is blocking you, move it to the side and all of a sudden there is a better connection. But dual meanings, I know that wasn't your direct question, um, but just something I thought of that I hadn't talked about yet. Um, generally speaking, especially when we're talking about these universal body language cues, because they're innate, because they're not really learned, because we just automatically do them, um, most things have a pretty clear meaning. Yeah. So, say you're on a date with somebody and you're like, I don't like this, and you notice it off, um, how do you think the body language is going to look on that one perceived thing on the date? Yeah, that's such a great question. So what he asked is, if you're out on a date, say, and somebody is a little more reserved, and closed off, and you can tell, and now you, you'll definitely be able to tell, um, is there anything that you can do using your body language? So obviously there's only so much we can do to build rapport with somebody if they're not willing to build it back. So just know that if you're trying to build rapport with somebody and they're not, they're just like not cluing in, it's not that you're not doing something right, just know it's not necessarily about you. That's I think thing number one. It's like a mindset shift that has nothing to do with body language, but it's not about you, it's about them. Um, second of all, if you wanna make sure that you're building rapport with somebody, even if they're closed off, then you start to close off. And that will disconnect, so it, it's like, it's good and bad, right? Because you're, you're closing yourself off, but you're meeting them where they are. So what you don't wanna do, right? Because we, we, we like people who are like us, we don't like people who are not like us. If they're closed off, the last thing you wanna do is all of a sudden like be crazy with your body language and be like all over the place because then all of a sudden they're like, oh, like I don't even know how to, like that doesn't even register to me how to relate to that. So. So the next step, so you can be closed, you can also be like small with your gestures. So instead of being all the way closed, you slow down. Somebody who's closed off, you gotta think about other attributes that they might be feeling, right? They're, they, might be, they might be breathing a little heavier. They may be quieter. Um, they may have low power body positioning. Like they may be doing a lot of things. So if you can match that and then come up even a little bit. So if they're like this and they're like, yeah, I'm having a good time, and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm having a really good time too. You open yourself up, but you're still using one of the things that, you're, that you are connected on, like the level and tone of voice that they're using, then that starts to build more rapport too. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Um, well then, that is the talk. Thank you so much. And hey, I wanna connect with you. If you have any questions that come up after this, um, please feel free to shoot me an email um, and we can go over whatever question you have. And thank you so much for having me.